My name is Wendy Van Norden. I'm a leader for the Sierra Club, and I want to bring you to the Galapagos Islands. First of all, I'd like to talk about the geology of the Galapagos Islands. You probably know that the Galapagos Islands has wonderful animals. Animals seen nowhere else on Earth. Animals so tame that you can walk right up to them. And you probably also know that it was the Galapagos Islands that gave Charles Darwin the information that allowed him to create the theory of evolution. Why are these islands so different from anywhere else on Earth? Why were they the perfect place to see evolution happening? Well, to answer that question, I have to explain where, how, and when the Galapagos Islands formed. So here they are, a group of islands about 600 miles off the coast of South America, specifically off the coast of Ecuador, of which they are a part. Now these islands have on them big craters. Now those aren't actually craters. Those of you who are geology buffs know that those are too big to be a crater. Those are calderas, the collapsed top of large volcanoes. Ecuador has plenty of volcanoes. Here's one of them, Cotopaxi. And this volcano looks like the average volcano. It's called a composite volcano, has a typical cone shape, and it is active because it is part of the Andes mountain chain. Now the Andes formed over a subducting plate. They're on the edge of South American plate, and the Nazca plate, an oceanic plate, is busy subducting underneath it. As the plate subducts, it brings water with it, and the water causes melting in the plate above it. And that melted rock becomes the lava of a volcano like Cotopaxi. That's basically how most volcanoes on Earth are formed. They are formed at the edge of plate boundaries. All of these red dots that you see are volcanoes formed that way? Well, almost all of them anyway. Cotopaxi certainly is. Here it is on the edge of South America. And in fact, there are so many volcanoes formed from subduction around the Pacific Plate. We call that the Ring of Fire. However, there are some exceptions to the subduction forming volcanoes. Kilauea, which is on the Hawaiian Islands, is an active volcano dead center Pacific plate. And the Cape Verde volcanoes off of Africa, those are also not on a plate boundary. And of course, the Galapagos volcanoes, those are not on a plate boundary either. Let's take a look how these volcanoes formed. It's easiest to show them over Hawaii. Now Hawaii is located on top of what's known as a mantle plume, hot rock, or magma coming up from the boundary between the core and the mantle. When it hits the Pacific plate, it produces active volcanoes. So Hawaii with Mauna Loa, Mauna Kea are all over a hot spot. They're active because of rising magma. However, the Pacific plate keeps, as you go further and further away from the hot spot, the volcanoes are progressively older. Kauai, which is over 5 million years old, is very lush because in 5 million years, you have plenty of time to create soil. However, Hawaii is still quite barren because it is forming even as we speak. Going to the Galapagos, you can see that they are on a plate, an oceanic plate, but that plate is moving to the east. Island of Fernandina, where you have the Cumbre volcano, that is presently on the hot spot, whereas San Cristobal and Española have been pulled away from the hot spot over the last four to five million years. So they're the older volcanoes. La Cumbre of Fernandina Island is active. Now, you'll notice that it's a very different shape than Cotopaxi. Cotopaxi, being a subduction zone volcano, is smaller and more cone-shaped, whereas La Cumbre is known as a shield volcano. Like the volcanoes of Hawaii, it's very, very broad 
And it is not as explosive as subduction zone volcanoes. When the lava flows out of a shield volcano, it does that. It simply flows and rarely explodes into the air. And when that lava cools, it makes this black rock called basalt. If there's a lot of acid present, that basalt can rust into more of a red color. So this is on one of the younger islands, or as one of the older islands, you can have a forest. That is a perfect place to find new species. New species showed up because the islands are very young, and it's easy to see their evolution if they've only been around for a short time. Now, I know that five million years doesn't sound like a short time to many people, but to a geologist, it's the day before yesterday. You have a series of barren islands of different ages. Animals and seeds landed on them at slightly different times. And more importantly, they're 600 miles from the mainland. So it's very hard to get back and forth between these islands and the mainland. And they're not overwhelmed with the animals that have evolved for hundreds of millions of years I recommend you go to my next series, which talks about the evolution of the plants and animals on the Galapagos Islands. Thank you.